Hi everybody, my name is Mike Novus. I am one of the board members here down at the Gardner Camp. One of the things that I really like to do while I'm here is I try to oversee the, the astronomy program that we have. We really want you to come down to see our, our wonderful sky and how great the stars are. It is really great to be here. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit today about our telescopes and what we do. There are all types of telescopes. Um, it's great to have your own if you have one in the backyard to be able to see some stars. Our telescopes are a little bit more sophisticated, but I'll tell you a little bit about them. But uh, we have all different types from all different sizes to big ones to small ones. And they do uh, pretty much the same thing, except that some have the ability to sort of see farther out into space while others are be able to see what the planets are doing. These two here we're going to show today are a little bit different. They um, both can do far away, deep sky, we call it, or the planetary, but I'm gonna show you the two and give you a little idea what's all involved with them and how they work. This one here on the right, on my left here, this is our LX90. It is a, um, it looks really big and powerful and things, but it is a, a really pretty cool telescope. This is the primary one we like to use. Uh, it is a, uh, it's made by Mead. It is a Smith Cassadron, which is, it's just the type of telescope that it is. It is primarily a ref uh, reflector telescope, meaning that when the light comes into the tube here, it goes through a series of mirrors, bounces off back and forth, and then ends up putting the image in a mirror right down here in the back. This is the actual eyepiece that we actually look through. And the thing that's really interesting about telescopes are it doesn't necessarily make the difference is how big the telescope is for the magnification. It is what the eyepieces actually do. So you're gonna to see today this telescope and the other one behind me here are different sizes, but they both have the same kind of magnification. The bigger the tube, the more light we can actually gather into the, into the telescope to actually put the image down on the mirror so that this eyepiece then, almost like a magnifying glass or a microscope in a way, actually can see the, the piece. This is um, what we call a computer-driven telescope. Uh, we call it go-to technology, meaning that we can punch into our computer, which has got an internal computer, and it will be able to see over 140,000 different sky objects that are up there just by a matter of punching in the coordinates to our, our hand box right here, and it will actually move and go to where we want it to go. But uh, it is really fascinating, new technology. It's sort of been around for about 10, 12 years, but you would think, how does, a computer, how does this telescope actually know where all of this stuff is? And we'll see that inside the, inside the telescope, in the computer, there is, there is all the calculations and all of the um, placements and stuff where the stars will be in the sky on a particular night. Uh, we, up until just a, a number of years ago, uh, we had to sort of do all of it by manual. We had to know where the star was or where, where the constellation was and actually manually have to do it. Nowadays, we let the computers actually do it for us. This particular um, telescope actually sits what we call on a fork mount, meaning it looks like a fork. It sits in between in here. The computer actually drives all of this and it moves and turns to the right place. The way it knows how to go where we want it to go, we had to do a couple different things. This does have GPS on it, which is really pretty cool. Uh, when it turns on, it immediately connects up to the satellites. It then tells the computer that, yes, we're in uh, the Gardner camp just outside of Hollow, Illinois, so it knows where it's at, but it's not quite sure where it's pointing. And so what we do, once the telescope is turned on, it then wants to find two particular stars. And the computer will actually pick it out itself. And uh, today, as we set this one up, even though it is daytime, the constellations are still out, the stars are still out, we just can't see them. It actually went and picked two different stars. 
One was Arcturus, and the first thing it did, it turned to try where Arcturus was. It located it, I pushed enter. Then it wanted to go and find Capella, which is another star that it usually goes to. Once it found that, then it was said, we're ready to go. I turned it back and chose for it to go to Polaris. So now it's actually looking at the North Star and it is ready to go anywhere we want it to go. This particular telescope moves in a different, very different type of way than other telescopes will do. But you can see, and I'll let you know, I'll just see how fast it really will work. But we had this one set to go to um, Arcturus, and all we have to do is I have to just push the button and say go to, and it will go automatically right where Arcturus is. Pretty fast. Now, if I was using a telescope that had to be done manually, it would take me quite a bit longer. First of all, I'd have to know where Arcturus is and, uh, and, and in what constellation it sits in. Then I'd have to actually locate the telescope to the star. The neat thing about this one is this, is we all know that the Earth is still moving, the sky is somewhat moving. If we're using a manual telescope, within a matter of a few seconds, you'll see the star actually move off out of the field of view. This, because it is all computerized, it is now constantly tracking the star. I never have to go and try to uh, relocate it again. It's always following it. So no matter if I'm out here for two hours and we're studying or we're, we're in our star parties and we're looking at it, it will always have the star in the middle of the viewfinder unless I change to go someplace else. Um, but that is, this is what a, a, uh, a Cassadrian or a uh, reflector telescope looks like. And there's all different sizes, as I said, and you might have one that you might, you can even use in your backyard. It works exactly the same. Most of the time, most people who are amateurs at this usually have to do it manually. We get to do it by computer. telescope is a little bit different than the one we've just been looking at. This is an LX85. It's made by Mead, except that you notice that it looks a little different than the other one. This one here is longer. This one is what we call a refractor in, the, in that this one does not have mirrors in it. This is actually has a set of lenses as it is not as, it's not as big in the tube. Uh, so its ability to collect light is going to be a fraction less than the other one, but this one has a tendency to be a little bit more accurate only because it's all lenses. There's no bouncing around, no reflecting back and forth. And it works off of a different type of mount. Notice this is not a fork mount, but this is what we call a German equatorial mount. And what it's going to do, and it's going to move completely different, and I'll show it to you in a minute. We'll look at Arcturus also. It will go the exact same star the other one did. Except you're gonna notice that it's gonna move, it's got all these other little different parts to it. And um, one of the things this does not have that this one does have. This one does not have GPS. And so, but we don't need GPS with this one. It does have its own computer. It's the same thing as the other. There's a, in the, in the hand box and in the computer, we have 140,000 different objects that can go find, except that it's just gonna do it a little bit different. Here's what we do to set this up a little bit differently. Actually, in the base of the telescope, there is another scope. And this scope is going to be, to make this thing set up right, is this will actually look at Polaris. And we actually set this so that this has perfectly got Polaris in the middle of the mount. Once that's set, then we know it's absolutely set toward Polaris then it will go and again locate two stars. Then it knows exactly where it's pointing. 
It knows exactly where it's located because of its position to Polaris, and then uh, it knows all the, all the settings, and then it will work exactly the same way. On this one here particularly, what we do with this one a lot of times is we, instead of just looking at the stars, we have the, we have the ability also to digitally take pictures of our stars and our deep sky objects. And so what I put in here, instead of a lens that we would look through, this is actually a um, color digital camera that actually takes the pictures for us so that they should, and then this cord then connects onto our, our computers and we can actually take pictures of it and put them on Facebook, look at them, blow them up, however we want to do. But uh, we do a, a lot with this kind of thing. And here at the Gardner Camp, we want to try to teach both how to look and observe, but also then to be a little bit more advanced in how to work with computers. I'll let you see how this operates and works a little bit different than this one here, but they both get to the exact same star at the same time. So notice how this goes. So it does have the ability to turn on what we call its um, declination, and it will also turn on the right, um, you turn on the declination right now, and then it's gonna turn on its right ascension. Mm -hmm. Notice it didn't have to work very fast. Notice here though, this one here has a weight on it. And the reason for that is because it has to be balanced because this thing will contort and go in all different types of directions. So all of this has to be balanced out so it doesn't fall over. Where on a fork mount as the LX90 had, we didn't have to do that. But all these will capture uh, the same stars and the same images and all of the same planets, except that they're used for different things. But uh, we want you to come down to the, the Gardner Camp so you can get to see uh, what they look like. I know you've seen in your books what, you know, what Saturn and Jupiter and all those look like. It's more exciting to actually really see them. So we want you to come down and see us and spend some time looking through our telescopes.